Hey everyone, it's Denise Brown from CaringOurWay.com. Welcome to a caregiving service. We go live on the first Sunday of every month at 11 a.m. Eastern time. And then I post a recording on our YouTube channel. So if you can't join us live, you can still enjoy it. And the idea is for us to gather for some quiet, some reflection, and some gratitude. And it's really gratitude for you. So let's get started. So I like to start off with a story. And last month, I told the story of my mentor, Merkel Liberty. And today I'm going to tell you a story about Donna Baldwin, who I know and met through Merka. The reason I tell these stories is because I think when we're doing something so powerful and meaningful, but yet so inside of our house, like caregiving, we can wonder, is anyone going to remember what I did? And so I tell these stories so you know you will be remembered. What you do, what you've done will be remembered. Okay, so here's the story of Donna. She was actually one of our very first Caregiver of the Year award winners. I used to do a Caregiver of the Year award winner contest starting in 1995, 1996. And I did this to create awareness of family caregivers. At that time, there wasn't a lot out there yet. There was, but not a lot. So I did this contest to really share the stories of what family caregivers were doing. And Donna was one of the first winners. And she won because she had this really interesting experience during caregiving. So she took care of her mom who had a stroke. And she talked about how prior to her mom's stroke and her mom moving in with her, she had plastic plants in her house because she couldn't grow a thing. She tried, she just couldn't do it. And then she realized after she had been caring for her mom for a while, that she actually could grow something. Now, I wish I could tell you the moment when she brought in a live plant that actually survived in her home, but I don't know that. So I'm just going to imagine there was a moment that someone gave her a plant, a live plant, and she thought, oh my gosh, well, I'm, it's a gift. I'm going to keep it. And she took care of it and it grew. And her realization was, oh my gosh, I can grow in my house. And I thought that was so profound because we can actually expand that insight into meaning so much more. We can grow even during a difficult time. And I know that that sometimes feels impossible or Pollyannish or just not right, especially on a really tough day where you think, you know what, the only thing I'm growing is resentment. <laughs> the only thing that seems to be uh, expanding in my home is bitterness. And I get it. I get it. And I think it's okay for us to hold on to this thought that, yes, this is tough. This is difficult. This is awful. And I can still grow something. I can still nurture something outside of caregiving that is meaningful and powerful and helpful. And that's what I learned from Donna, that who we were before caregiving isn't who we stay during and after caregiving. So before caregiving, she really identified as someone who can't grow plants. And then that identity changed during caregiving to someone who can. She can grow. So there's something that's growing for you. And it could be related to career or relationships or a belief system or a perspective or a knowledge base or a possibility. It could be any of those things. I truly believe something is growing for you and you might not see the new growth. You might not see the buds and that's okay because I know it's true for you. Something is growing for you during caregiving and there'll be a day when you think, oh my gosh, I see the growth. I see what's been growing for me. Okay, so that's the story of Donna Baldwin. Okay. So let's move into 
gratitude for you. So this month, I'd like to tie gratitude to you to a sense that we might have during caregiving of feeling betrayed. So this sense of betrayal can come from a perspective that life has betrayed us, that we have been a good person, we have done good work, and yet here we are in really tough times. That can feel like we've been betrayed. Where's our good karma? Where is all, you know, this idea that we reap what we sow? Okay, I reaped good stuff. When am I going to sow good stuff for me? Why does it always have to be tough and difficult and challenging and obstacle after obstacle? That is so frustrating. And it can really make us feel depleted because we think life has betrayed us. Maybe family members and friends have betrayed us. Maybe our workplace feels like sometimes a place of betrayal. Oh, so in this time when you might feel betrayed, I actually want to thank you for still doing what you do. It's hard to do it anyway, but when you have the sense that something or someone has betrayed you, it makes it even harder. The hurt that happens from this sense of betrayal can really drain us. It can feel like we're trying to heal something, but it's not a wound we see on our arm that we put a bandage on. It's this nick at our heart, but we don't know where and we don't know how to heal it. That's hard. And yet you keep going you keep going. So my gratitude for you today is a thank you for going, even on those days when the sense of betrayal feels overwhelming. Thank you. Thank you for continuing. Thank you for moving forward. Thank you for still trying. Thank you for persevering. Thank you for your tenacity. Thank you for your advocacy. Thank you. I will also say, thank you for battling that sense of betrayal. Thank you for experiencing that, understanding that it hurts, and moving beyond it, giving yourself a chance to heal, keeping the faith, remaining kind. You don't have to be kind all the time, but I think that you have a kind essence that stays with you at all times. Thank you for moving through and keeping on keeping on. It's hard, it's hard. And I hope that soon any betrayal that you have felt truly becomes something in your past and it's replaced by a sense of knowing that you never betrayed yourself. Others, life, situations might have felt like a betrayal to you and you never betrayed yourself. And I think that's so important to remember regardless of the betrayals that surround you, inside of you, you never betrayed yourself. Hold on to that. Stay with that. Honor that. That's huge. You never betrayed yourself. Thank you for that. Thank you for the compassion, for the caring, for the graciousness, for the kindness that you put out into the world. Thank you. Okay, so let's move on to our next part of our service, and that is in memory. So I'd love for you to close your eyes and just think about what you'd like to remember. You might want to remember others who have died, 
you might want to remember something good that happened for you. Something that brings you a sense of relief that good things happen. You might want to remember a good time with someone who has passed. Whatever you'd like to remember right now, really envision that memory. The memory of the person, the memory of the situation, the memory of you in success, in good times, in abundance. Whatever the memory is that fills your heart, I'd like you to just take a moment and be in that memory. Visualize it. Think of where you were and what you're wearing. Think of who's with you. Think of what you're doing. Think of what you're saying. Think of what you're hearing. Create that memory right now in your head. Truly visualize it. Okay, stay with that memory. Let it fill your heart. Let it calm your doubts. Let it renew your faith. Whatever the memory is that brings you a sense of peace, a sense of calm, a feeling of love, remember it. Okay, go ahead and take just another few seconds in memory, fully present in your mind with that wonderful memory. Okay, so let's move into our intentional question. And this week, our intentional question is, what's the plan for my worry? So I have a phrase that I remind myself all the time, which is, every worry needs a plan. So let's use our intentional question of, what's the plan for my worry to help us move forward from being stuck in a worry into moving into action to take care of the worry. We have so much to worry about that sometimes it can feel like we are stuck in worries. And I like to think of a plan because that helps me move out of the worry and at least into some kind of an action. It can be a little bit of a almost like a soft action, writing out a plan, writing out the worries. It could be a little bit more of a, a physical action, like taking a, making a phone call, searching on Google. It could be taking a walk. It could be making something different for dinner just to get yourself out of the space of worrying. But a plan helps. So the intention for this week is, when you're stuck in a worry, ask yourself, what's the plan for this worry? And if you go to our website, caringourway.com, I posted this as part of our Sunday question area. And you'll also see two, two tools, which we call our caregiving wheels. And one wheel helps you really name the worry. And then the second wheel helps you figure out what's the plan for this worry. It's just a way for you to start to think about the worry by naming it. So it's not just a fuzzy, I'm worried. It is, I'm worried about this. And then helps you feel inspired to think about what's the plan for that worry. Okay, so that's our intentional question for this week. And our intention for this week is to really move out of worry so that we're not using energy to worry, we're instead using energy to take care of the worry. I know that there's this stat that everybody tells you when you, when you are a worrier and that is 90% of what you worry about doesn't happen. 
And as family caregivers, I truly believe that does not apply because something has already happened for us that has changed the course of our life. So we have things to worry about. And I don't think it's minimizing or pushing down the worries. It's actually thinking out, okay, I have a worry. I have a right to worry. <laughs> I have a reason to worry. And I'm going to use this as a way to decide how to move forward. I'm not going to stay stuck in it. I'm going to move forward into it. So our intention this week is really around acknowledging that the worries exist in our life. We're not going to minimize them. We're not going to pretend they don't exist. We're going to listen to them so that we move forward with them. Every worry needs a plan. Okay, so that's our intention for the week. And then let's move into our close for this week. So thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Denise, for being here with us today. And thanks everybody for all you do. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your compassion. Thank you for your tenacity. Thank you for continuing. And we'd love for you to join us on Caring Our Way for more support because we are there to support you. Okay, everyone. I'm Denise Brown. Thanks so much for being here. I'll see you next month for a caring service, which happens on the first Sunday of every month at 11 a.m. Eastern time. And then I post it on our YouTube channel on Mondays. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.